Hello, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland. So here I am in St. Ives. Or I, as I should say, as I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Every wife had seven sacks. Every sack had seven cats. Every cat had seven kits. All in all, kittens, cats, sacks and wives, how many were going to St. Ives? Think about it. Seven multiplied by seven, multiplied by seven, multiplied by seven. And the answer is, the answer is one, as I was going to St. Ives. Well, what's that um, movie from about 1996 starring um, Jeremy Irons and uh, the other, the tall American guy, I can't remember his name, uh, and then he's in some rough area and that, that as part of some kidnap bomb plot or whatever, that, that riddle is in it. But it can be interpreted two different ways. Is it as I was going to say, I, I, the right answer is one, it's a trick question. Or indeed, is it seven um, to the power of three? So, um, so I suppose to the power of four, really. Uh, so here we are, looking out the northern part of the, part of the uh, Cornwall Peninsula, out into, um, I suppose, a bit of the Bristol Channel, really, um, and various headlands and islands. So I don't know the name of this promontory, St. Ives. Don't ask me who he was. So this fabulous um, town on the English Riviera, you see the tide is right out and it must come in very fast. It's got to go from there, hundreds of meters, right to the inner harbor. You'll see all these fishing boats on the sand over there. So um, the tide is already coming in a little bit and it's fabulous. People are playing here, have the little tents to shade them, building sand castles, digging things out. You see the rivulet running out um, in towards this uh, little part of the Atlantic Ocean. You can take boat trips here. So um, there's no railway station here. So it's a small town of uh, about 10,000 souls. It's reading how the Royal Marine Commanders are based here from 1943 to 1950. Um, so you can fly to Newquay Airport, not too far away. Uh, the flights from London Gatwick, from London Heathrow seasonal flights. Um, otherwise coach trips, unless you're going to drive. There are a couple of car parks in the town. The rugby club has got an overflow uh, car park. They only, have it, um, they only have it seasonally. So here I am in the pier. I thought I'd give you a good view of that, of the town. You can see those sort of Norman style church towers. A lot of non-conformists down in Southwest England, which is curious because in the 16th century, it was a, it was a, um, uh, it was a really, um, how would I put it, a hotbed of Roman Catholicism. There was the Western Rebellion. Um, you know, at the end of the reign of, of Henry VIII or into the early years of Edward VI. But within a century, it became the most fervently um, Protestant area and people who left the Church of England who became Presbyterians, Baptists, Independents, um, Congregationalists, uh, so forth. Eventually Quakers um, in the late 17th century when George Fox spoke truth to power, as he invented the phrase, um, and uh, latterly Methodists in the late uh, 18th century. So the Anglican Church not too strong here. The Southwest England for some reason was, was a um, stronghold of liberalism well into the 20th century than the Liberal Democrats. Southwest England was um, a particularly fertile territory for them. But I mean, not so much now because they had a dreadful election last time. Uh, very conservative now. So Labour's never had a major presence here. So yeah, quite a tourist town. In the last couple of years, it's had really booming seasons because going abroad was very difficult with coronavirus, COVID passes and negative tests and proof of vaccination. Now all that's gone, but it has got more foreign tourists. And as you can see, we've been blessed with this serene weather. The sun is smiling upon us. There's scarcely a speck of cloud sailing the cerulean sky. Um, so it really is just sublime today. Um, but not actually too hot. There's the faintest zephyr mercifully wafting us. Um, you can see there are um, uh, squadrons of, of uh, seagulls around. So warmly recommended. About half an hour drive from the southern um, side of the peninsula from Newlyn or thereabouts. Penzance is the big town. You can get the choo-choo on Great Western Railway or from London, from, from, from London uh, Waterloo. To, to Penzance. I do want to see that Gilbert and Sullivan show, The Pirate of Penzance. As I said, there were real seafarers around here because of the rough land, the thin soil. Um, it's uh, not very fruitful if you are an arable farmer. There are plenty of shepherds because our fleecy friends, they, they do well on the marginal land here um, because they're such lush verdure, these incredibly well-watered um, meads. Um, also uh, for, for, for raising cattle, but not good for um, 
cereal crops because it's just too wet, too many fungal diseases. Obviously you can cultivate cereal crops, not very well, which is why so many of them left the culture of the soil and became fishermen and eventually um, mariners. They sailed the wide world over. And as I said in the other video, that's why their, their accent very much influenced the accent of the southern colonies of the 13 colonies of the old days, the southern states of the United States in more recent centuries, and indeed the uh, West Indies. So look at that little uh, um, lighthouse there. They're all automatic. They used to have two people crewing a lighthouse. It was a notorious case when one guy went insane and murdered his, um, his uh, housemate. So thereafter they always had to have a, a crew of um, three. And who'd want to do it? What a lonely existence. Stuck out there for months at a time, be giving your provisions and not relieved for six months because sometimes it was too perilous, the voyage. Uh, there was a terrible tempest brewed up and no means of communicating with the mainland. But of course it was vital for the purpose of nav navigation. So these ships didn't founder upon the rocks and reefs. Uh, yeah, so um, there's um, hardly a breath of wind today, but I will show you the cross of St. Pyron. Anyway, there are many fishermen about. There are plenty of seafood restaurants. I went to one yesterday night myself. They serve mussels. They serve all sorts of white fish cooked in a, you know, fried in a beer batter and, and, and things like that. Lobster and all sorts of the fruits of the sea. Take a look at these. Are these lobster pots or what? Quite pricey. Lobster Thermidor is available. I don't know what it is. How's that different from any other lobster? But you know, it has to be served very fresh fish. So always look at the gills. The darker red they are, the healthier, the fresher they are. And obviously anything tending towards white, well don't touch it. Because pallid gills means it's rotting. And you'd be fearfully sick if you did. So I can actually sp sp smell some of the fish even here. There are plenty, obviously, fish factories. No, they don't make them, but they put them in cans and things like that. So perhaps you're getting a flavour of the place, but I wish the uh, olfactory sense came through on this video. I can tell you it, it doesn't. I mean, I'm not someone who's a very fond of our scaly friends, uh, but you know, I do, I do suffer from them occasionally. I'm told it's good for my brain, you know, like the Japanese, why they're so incredibly cerebral. They think us Occidentals are malodorous because we consume far too much meat. Look at that little tower up there, a bedraggled cross of St. Pyron's flag hanging there limply. All right, so that's the flag of Cornwall. So Cornwall, this county, has got um, about 600,000 people, but only 14% of people here identify as Cornish. The rest have moved in from other parts of the realm or indeed other parts of the world. So it's not very ethnically diverse, it's about 95% white. Um, and they're not of many sort of non-white tourists. It's not as ethnically mixed as any, any, any of the conurbations. So to give you an idea what the place is like, very hilly, a little bit forested, and they're thick, dense hedgerows, lots of, um, uh, ferns, uh, a broom, heather, things like that. So um, often it's a, a brownish purple, the landscape, and there's some rather um, bleak moors around and about. So please um, follow me on, on, on um, Patreon and look at my website, George from Ireland. You can see lots of articles there, buy my books on, on Amazon. And indeed, thank you for donating on PayPal, GeorgeCallahan79 at gmail.com. And remember, I tutor people online and all sorts of subjects like history, politics, French, law, English as a foreign language, English literature, English language. Is there anything else? Well, I'm a tour guide in Londinium. Okay, thanks everyone. Toodaloo.